why the Ravens have really been missing Marcus Peters recently more than ever. Should Ravens consider moving Patrick Queen to safety? Should Eric DaCosta give Lamar Jackson another gift on offense before the trade deadline? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's St. Raven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subs series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com don't send it anywhere else uh, and for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon I love y'all a special shout out to all the team keep it clean patrons I uh, appreciate y'all supporting and just everybody as a whole team keep it clean Thank you for making questions from subscribers so much fun, so enlightening uh, and educational too, because we always come away learning something. I love y'all. We got some great questions as we always do. Let's do it. First question came from my boy, John. Oh, I appreciate you being a patron, John. He said, I ain't graving with this loss to the Bengals. It clearly showed how much the Ravens miss Marcus Peters. If you remember in the playoff game against the Titans, Marlon was on A.J. Brown and he was struggling, but then they were able to put Marcus Peters on him and he had a better game against him. Uh, Marlon is a beast, but he, like anyone else, has bad games. That's why having Marcus Peters was a cheat code. He also has the ability to shut down receivers. So when one is struggling that day, the other one is picked up the slack <laughs> that's a good uh a good example and a, I, I like the way that you put that uh, and that that was nice with, with having both of those it's like one of those is a physical press corner the other one is a, a zone corner and he uh he'll be jumping all the picks in the world and jumping all the routes and whatnot um but they they were a nice balance they created a really nice balance um but it's it's up to wink to hide the uh hide how much we miss marcus peters though but anyway he said it uh, I feel like that's the biggest injury to this defense. By the way, Rob Ryan was the coach when the Cowboys defense was struggling. I'm not saying he's a bad coach, but <laughs> there is a little pattern. Um, and that is something somebody brought that up to me recently. They were like, man, you see, uh, last year tackling wasn't an issue, especially for Patrick Queen and them. Tackling wasn't a problem. Uh, he, his problem, his biggest problem last year was just looking out of place. And sometimes he would just get beat in, like more so in, in passing place. Uh, he just looked at a place, looked a little bit lost sometimes. And, I mean, he was a rookie on an offseason like the, like they didn't even have an offseason. So, and I, I thought he did pretty good overall last year uh, for what the situation was. But now the issue has been tackling. And somebody brought up how the only thing that's really changed is that they added Rob Ryan as the uh, linebacker coach. And with them adding him as a linebacker's coach, I uh, they they likened it to – when you you work somewhere and everything going smoothly and what not everything's cool but then you get a new manager and everything changes so they they likened it to that situation with Patrick Queen when everything was going pretty smoothly then you you got a new linebackers coach and everything changes is is that the reason that Patrick Queen could possibly been just maybe the the mental is just it's just been messing with him could it be i, I don't know uh, but back to the first part of your, your comment, question, observation. Yeah, Marcus Peters is definitely missed. But Anthony Averitt, he's he been doing his thing overall. He's been, he been having a decent season so far. Um, now, it's crazy because Marlon Humphrey this, this year has uh, been a bit of a big yikes. Um, he has had a lot more moments than we're used to where he has just, he just struggled. Struggled. And it started week one. Week one, um... Well, he he was on Darren Wall a lot of times too, but he uh, that the end of that game, and maybe they were just gas, but the end of that game where he just gave up, I was just like, "What is that?" It was tough, and then he gets beat like just oh my goodness! And shout out to Demarcus Robinson because the route was beautiful. Uh, he just dogged Marlon Humphrey from that Chiefs game, um, but I mean Humphrey he hasn't been bad, but uh, his, his definitely hasn't been the Marlon Humphrey that we used to. And, again, for the past couple of years, he is used to having Marcus Peters opposite him. So that helps a lot. That helps a whole lot. Uh, but something that uh, Jonas Schaefer brought out, which is a really good point. He said he got it from Pro Football Reference. He said the Ravens defense has a big play problem. And it's interesting because that's something that I had noticed certainly last year. 
I was like, man, the, the Ravens defense, they, they have not been giving up many big plays through the air. But anyway, um, he said the Ravens has a defense has a big play problem, and here's how many scores of 40 plus yards they've allowed in recent years. So touchdowns that go for 40 or more yards, that's a lot. Those are really big plays. In 2017, they only allowed two of those. Two of them. Two. In 2018, they only allowed one. Oh, my goodness, that defense. They allowed one. And that was under both Joe Flacco and Lamar Jackson. They allowed one play for a touchdown that went for more than 40 yards. One. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. 2019, they allowed four. So it went up a little bit, but nothing too crazy because you go through 16 games and you only allow four touchdown plays of 40 yards or more. And then last year, they were like, all right, last year, COVID year, let's tighten up. We, COVID protocols, they got to make us tighten up, and we're we going to tighten up on defense too. Last year, 2020, they only allowed two. So two plays of uh, two touchdowns of 40 yards or more. That's it. It's like, okay, nice, nice, nice. They fixed that. But then this year, they've allowed seven, <laughs> and we in week seven. Oh, we just got through a week seven. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, they... <laughs> That's not good. Um, so, yeah, Marcus Peters is certainly missed. But um, that's also on the back end. Too. That's on Wink, too. Again, that, that's on Wink. Yeah, we miss Marcus Peters and whatever, but the, the show must go on. As bad as it sounds, the show must go on. It has to. Uh, Marcus Peters is a great player, phenomenal player, smart player, instinctive player, nice player. But he can't play right now. He's out. So Ravens got to counter that. That's on Wink. You need more help on the back end. You're giving up big plays. Some of it due to tackling. Some of it due, due to not having any help up top. All the blitzing. Again, just got to be smarter about it. So, it is what it is. Next question came from my guy, Lee P. Shout out to you for being a patron, my guy. He said, hey, engraving blessings to you and the family. We appreciate it. He said, here's a thought. Considering his struggles, should the Ravens try moving Queen to safety? Oh, I mean, it's, look at that. Team Keep It Clean always be like in sync. And th this is a little different in sync, but they be in sync. He said, I mean, really, what's the difference between Queen and Jamal Adams? <laughs> what? <laughs> Neither one can cover, and they're about the same size. They move Queen and play the box, that box safety, rush the quarterback, and maybe even replace Chuck Clark in the future. What say you? Oh, boy. That is a uh, wow. Moving Patrick Queen to safety. Um, everything would be more in front of. Well, you said box safety though. If he's a box safety, he might as well just stay a linebacker. I mean, they, they could. I I think if if they're gonna move Patrick Queen, you could try him at outside linebacker as a pass rusher. I mean, that couldn't hurt. But with Patrick Queen, I think when he blitzes, he blitzes best when he blitzes from that middle linebacker spot. Um, and he can blitz in between the gaps. As if he was moved to outside linebacker, and then that would require him engaging a bit more uh, with those tackles. So, and we know that's been a problem of his to to really engage. Uh, when he engages with blockers, it's been a problem. When the tackling has been a problem. So, if you want him to be at box safety, box safety still got to make a lot of tackles. If they a box safety, they're going to be a safety that's in the box. So they're going to be around the line of scrimmage. Around those tight ends, around the running back, same stuff that he's doing now. He'll have different responsibilities, but it will be the same stuff. So I just feel like it will be a waste to put him there. Next question came from my guy Harry, and appreciate you being a patron, Harry. He said, Hey, Graven, after watching how Bengals completely manhandled us in our own home and exposed our weaknesses, what should we be concentrating on during our bye week? Tackling and knowing your assignment should be where our defense first starts and then working on a decent pass rush should come after those fundamentals. I agree. And I'm glad I like how you put it in order of importance because the funder, it starts with the fundamentals. Like having a nice pass rush would be great. And we've been hoping for a great pass rush for years, but it just simply hasn't come. But having a nice pass rush would be nice, but the, the tackling would be on a higher priority list for me. Uh, but anyway, he said, on offense, I know we've been hurting because of the injuries, but every year we talk about being a bigger, more physical bully, but then we don't give the people who we drafted for these purposes to develop on the field. Phillips and Cleveland, I know they had their stints on the IR, but those were the enforcers. 
uh, that we drafted to protect Lamar to open up running lanes. I don't want to see them not getting a chance to prove and improve themselves like I felt they did to Ben Powers. Uh, now, with Cleveland, he was getting his opportunity, but then he got hurt. With Tyree Phillips, he, they were giving him his opportunity, but he got hurt. Because remember, he was the first starting left guard for the Ravens. That was his spot. So they were giving him his chance, but then he got hurt. Then they put Ben Powers there, and they started doing that little rotation with him and Ben Cleveland, Ben Powers and Ben Cleveland back and forth, Ben and Ben. And so, but then Cleveland got hurt. So they, they were giving those guys their shots. Uh, also, the running game has been non-existent since we uh, tied the Steelers for that streak. I blame this on EDC and Harbaugh. We know we lost our top three backs, but you mean to tell me we couldn't have traded for a young running back if Harbaugh is so unhappy with Tyson Williams? Instead of giving a chance to a young guy deserving of a shot, they get the 2015 All Madden running back team. Signing maybe one of them made sense, but all three uh, as a unit was stupid. They have no quickness to the holes. Ironically, the passing game is the one thing that I usually get on them for, uh, and this is the one thing that they actually have improved this year. I know the sky isn't falling, and we are 5-2, and two, but getting a beatdown like that from the Bengals shows we aren't an elite team either. We are somewhere between all right and good as a team. That's my rant. Thanks for being our sports psychologist and helping us in the flock through days like today with this team. Hashtag team. Keep it clean. Well, this was a fun one. Um, now, Ravens, are they an elite team? No, oh, they're not an elite team, but they have an opportunity to be. Uh, they have an opportunity to be a, a great team. And this is something that we talked about uh, throughout this season that I just felt like with the Ravens, they, um, w especially with all the injuries, <clears throat> excuse me, with all the injuries uh, that they faced, they they have an opportunity. Like they can, they got to fix some small stuff. And I mean, it's, it's crazy that we've been saying the same thing all year. Uh, they still haven't fixed it yet, and hopefully this bye week they fix it. But I've been saying that they, if they fix the small stuff, they have a chance to be uh, they they a good team, but they have a chance to be a great team. Um, because if they can fix the fundamental stuff, then that could take them a long way. And they got to fix the mental stuff too. They got they got to mature up a bit. Um. The team, uh, they 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 struggle right now. Um, uh, definitely on they they struggle early. Uh, on offense they struggle early. On defense they struggle late. That that's that's what it's been. Offense they struggle early. Defense they struggle late. And these things could be helped by a, a run game would help certainly. Um, again, for me it starts with the offensive line. That's where everything starts. Uh, and just when everything flows a lot smoother, that's when the, the whole games, they go a lot smoother and they go a lot better. Um, and just just playing more complete games. When Ravens play a complete game, when everybody puts in, in their parts, oh, it's a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty. But if, if one part's lacking like we saw in the Bengals game, offense was lacking early on, defense was holding it down, then offense start waking up a little bit. But then defense was like, um, we out. And then offense was like, uh, we out too. We gone. So definitely an incomplete game. Uh, but Chargers, offense, they started off. Defense started off good. And offense, they started off good. Defense kept going. Offense was like, let's, let's keep it going too. Come on. Defense kept going. Offense still kept going. Special teams, they put in their little work too. Complete game. Complete game. And look how that game went. Colts game, offense started slow. Defense started good. Well, they, they actually gave up that big. So in the first half, overall, they did a good job for, for all the yards that they gave up and all the big plays that they gave up. But so the defense in the first half, they were all right. They only gave up 10 points. But the offense in the first half, they started bad. So offense didn't, didn't do them any favors at all. Game could have been 17-10. It could have been 21-10, could have been 24-10, could have been something 10. But, nope, offense started off slow. So then the defense, they still, oh, boy, they still struggled bad. It wasn't a complete game in the Colts game at all. It was not a complete game at all. But the defense, they made just enough plays at the very end. Special teams, they came through. Those those block kicks and, and of course, the missed kick by them. But um, offense, they woke up late. Chiefs game. Oh, well, Lions game first. Well, actually, Broncos game first. Broncos game, offense, they started off slow. But the defense, they started off good. Then the offense finally started waking up after a little bit. And then they kept staying. That way. They kept being woke some more. And then um, finally, they uh, 
it was just coasting for the rest of the game. Defense kept it going. The offense was doing enough. And, again, complete game. Uh, Lions game, offense started off slow. And, I mean, that that was the Hollywood game with all the drops. So it was just, ooh, yikes. His worst game ever. So, but offense, they had opportunities, but Hollywood just, oof, he was dropping opportunities. Defense, they were doing that thing. They were doing all right. But then second half, uh, defense, they started falling asleep a little bit. And But the Ravens' offense, they woke up just enough, just enough, just enough. And then, of course, special teams, they close it up. But my point when I say all that is that, um, and I mean, we might as well just go through the first two games, too. The Chiefs game, offense started off slow. Defense, they, they, started, off, they started off all right. Or hot, but they started off all right. And then there was, there was one point where they, uh, Patrick Mahomes, they, they like two, two drives where you forced them to punt, that's really good against the Chiefs. Well, now, when you look at the Chiefs now, it's like, oh, was it really that good? Is this team, this Chiefs team really that good? But, um, but offense in that game started off slow. Started off slow. Because, again, Lamar threw the two picks. They started off slow. Um, but then they, they start picking it up. In defense, they made a little plays here and there. And they were like, they like kind of bouncing off each other, the offense and defense. And defense made enough plays. The offense obviously made enough plays. And they, they both clutched it out at the very end. Uh, and then against the Raiders, um, I think in that game, offense started off slow, I believe. Yeah. And the defense, they uh, – I forgot how they started in that game. But anyway, you get my point. Um, the, the, the offense has been starting out slow a lot. They, they, they start off slow a lot, and that doesn't help the defense. Like, this team, I know not every game is going to be a complete game. We know that. Not every game is going to be perfect. Not every game the offense is going to start off hot, and the defense is going to start off hot, and special teams going to do that. Thing. It's not going to be like that all the time. We get that. But it's got to be better. It has to be better. And this bye week is an opportunity for it to get better. Next question came from Ziona D. He said, hey, Graven, what's up, man? What's the word on Chris Westry? And why do people keep doubting the Ravens as a complete team? Well, that's because they don't play like a complete team. So they're not a complete team. Actually, this year they will never be a, tech, a technical complete team because they are very unhealthy, um, as you already know. Uh, speaking of unhealthy, Chris Westry, uh, he, they said he started running, so that's a good sign. Um, so right now this is uh, week seven. We get ahead into the bye week. Earliest Chris Westry, I would expect mm, maybe, would maybe be like week 11. Uh, yeah, I'd say probably like week 10, week 11 maybe. Not, nothing too soon. Next question came from my guy Dave. He said, uh, hey, Engraving, you're doing an amazing job. I don't know about all that part, but I appreciate it. He said, keep it up. I see you with a studio equipped with a large table and high chairs to broadcast your show uh, in the not-too-distant future. Look forward to watching your growth. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that, Dave. Thank you. He said, of course, we could use another offensive lineman or a strong run defending linebacker. But after watching how Arizona continues to give Kyler Murray gifts to help him succeed, like Zach Ertz, what would you think about EDC getting Lamar's contract extension completed to open up cap space so that we could take on the $12.5 million salary of wide receiver Michael Thomas? He's still on the PUP, by the way. He didn't come off yet. All right. Anyway, he said we would no longer have to stress over whether or not Sammy Watkins could stay healthy enough and make it through the playoffs. Thomas, Brown, Bateman, backed by Watkins, Prochet, Duvernay, and Boykins. Well, somebody would have to leave if, if they brought on Michael Thomas. But um, he said, I would think opposing defenses would be handcuffed, attempting to contain the run, taking us a step closer to that undefendable offense that Costa has been striving to assemble. Now, uh, Michael Thomas, I, I think that he would be – great in this offense um, because he is a if, if they start incorporating more short passes then then he will be great in this offense because that's Michael Thomas short passes little slant guy whatever he he's, he's nice he's nice he got good hands he catches good good yak as well but um how is Michael Thomas gonna eat in this offense to be a part of this offense if Lamar ain't got no protection to get him the ball uh, I think like right now, and we said this in another video too. It's crazy that with uh, with wide receiver right now that like y'all y'all know me. I love overkill. I love it, especially a wide receiver because Ravens have been very cheap at wide receiver over for the longest. Um, but right now, wide receiver is actually not a problem. And yeah, with Michael Thomas, it would be even less of a problem. And then you still had the backups that could still do their thing too. 
but offensive line is such a big issue such a huge issue and they just they 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 need the offensive line to get better we've seen what lamar jackson can do with these receivers that he has already when the offensive line protects you could add whatever receiver you want to if you ain't got no offensive line to protect that receiver would be useless so i wouldn't mind michael thomas again i think he'd be and he's real good in the middle of the field too um and and it would just make it that much harder for defenders to defend all these guys and like you said that indefensible offense like eric DaCosta talked about when he first became the gm starts with the offensive line so i would have to decline on michael thomas wow and the uh way we're gonna end off this episode of questions from subscribers came from my guy Jarvo. he said i have a question for you mr engraven should we make a trade for kyle fuller i know you like anthony avery but he's not the answer for us Mm. Wow. Um, now, if we were to trade for Kyle Fuller, who's on the Broncos, I believe, um, it would all depend on how Wink decided to play him because a lot is on Wink right now. Um, this defense has just they, – they've been a big yikes. And, yes, we lost Marcus Peters, which we know, but is, is he going to leave Kyle Fuller on an island? If he sees that Kyle Fuller's on an island and he's struggling, is he going to continue to keep him on that island from being blitz heavy? Um, just, is he going to put him in a position to succeed? Is he going to put him in a position to win? Is he going to be able to take advantage of matchups? Is he going to be able to see, all right, Kyle Fuller, he may be struggling with this guy, so let's switch this up a little bit. Well, it I think just so much doesn't even depend on who the Ravens got, but just how the guy that they got end up being used. Shout out to Graven.